talk about. How about this? Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun DIY crafts coming your way. I have a few sweet friends who are joining me today. I will give all those details to you a little bit later, but what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we'll be working on a DIY farmhouse home decor, so let's get started with project number one. Now for this project, I'm going to be using one of these shadow box houses from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use this package. It's so like a three pack from Walmart. I think Dollar Tree now carries a two pack. I don't know how big they are, but these are jumbo dowels. And I'm going to be using two of these thick wood circles from Dollar Tree and just one of these wood planks from the six pack also from Dollar Tree. One of these wood circles, they come in a big package at Hobby Lobby and a couple of these chunky uh, hearts from crafting with kimber.com these chunky wonky hearts of course i'll have the link down below in the description box so one of the circles i filled with uh, wood filler and the other don't need to because it will get covered up and then i cut one of the dowels into about a four and a half inches long or so so i traced the circle and folded it in half on a piece of paper and half again to find the center and just mark the center with a little pin and then I'm going to or a big needle actually I'm going to use this wood glue and I'm going to glue both of these circles together again the one that's filled with wood filler you want that one on top so that the one that's not filled in that little hole gets covered up and then I'm going to take the wood dowel and we're going to attach just to the center where I marked it with that big needle and then look at look at my clamping system you guys <laughs> hey girls got to do what a girl's got to do anyway to our shadow box wood house I cut a piece of cardstock to fit the center it's a little short all the way around but I'm going to paint that doesn't bother me and I'm using the six by six paper pad called romance novel by prima marketing hobby lobby still carries the six by six but it's an old uh paper collection so don't know if you can find it anywhere else but at least our Hobby Lobby still carries a six by six this is one of my favorite paper collections just cutting a sheet to fit that wood square I cut it about a quarter inch short all the way around and then I'm using this little extra piece you know that I have left over I'm going to trace these uh, thick wonky hearts here onto it I'm going to do front and back of these and then I'm going to come in oh like an eighth of an inch there maybe might be a quarter inch, but I think it's more like an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to redraw that pattern perimeter. I'm going to do this on all the hearts, front and back. And then that's what I'm going to cut out. I'm going to use two different uh, paper designs, but I'm just showing you one here because it's the same process on all three. And then I'll show you what it looks like when you put it on the wood heart with that little bit of perimeter showing. Here's what it looks like. So there's the back side and then the front side. Okay, so if you don't have the shadow box wood house from Dollar Tree, they have these that you could use. Um, or just a little like this is about a six by six um, home decor piece from Dollar Tree. Any of those will work fine. I'll be using Debbie's Design Diary Little Black Dress Chalk Paint. Painting most of my things with this chalk paint. And then we'll stain a couple of things later with the Waverly Antique Wax mixed with water. Yeah, so any of those other pieces will work fine. Um, I chose this because I like that it has a bigger lip on it. Now, if you use that wood house shape, you've got a smaller area there to, you know, add your little quote to, which is what I'm going to do on the side of this uh, shadow box house but you know anything will really work and I could have used the square piece from uh, Dollar Tree that home decor piece but I wanted a little fun shape to this so just again painting around the edges front and back painting around our one square wood piece just the sides and the top a little bit around that perimeter then we'll of course paint our wood hearts front and back I went ahead and drilled a hole in this uh, wood disc and then I'm going to drill a hole into the little shadow box house there here's the waverly antique wax mixed with water i sanded these little wood discs again they come in a package at hobby lobby sanded at first because it kind of has like a finish on it and then staining it and i'm staining our little spool holder here thing you don't have to stain around the very sides of those wood circles i did but i do sand most of it off because i don't want it staining what i put on there but sanded a lot of it off you may even want to put a sealer on it so this is a woodward i have in my supply they come from this is heidi swap she's got a lot of um you know scrapbooking type projects and stuff out there there's lots of woodwards you can buy woodwards at dollar tree or whatever these are just nice and tiny um you could write it on there of course um if you want but i'm using this waverly white paint and using a sponge dauber and dobbing it on so it gets a little texture 
put that aside. Now I'm coming with my sewing machine. I like to sew around the edges of my papers. All you that are, you know, new to my channel, or you're checking things out. I sew on my papers just like it's regular fabric. I sew on thin paper. I sew on cardstock. I've sewn on thin acrylic. I've sewn on really thin like cereal box type cardboard. And I, like I said, I just sew on it like it's regular fabric. I use a 10 or 11 needle, but some people that have tried this found that it's the holes are a little too big. So they go down to a nine. My tension is set on anywhere between four and five and my stitch length's on four because that's the longest stitch length the cell cheapo machine has. And then once everything is all sewn up, I take the open end of my scissor blades and I scrape along the edges, give it some rustic. Here's what that looks like. So if you're not a sewer, just scraping along the edges of all your papers just gives it that nice, fun, textural element. And I'll continue to do that on all my pieces here, even around the hearts. Yes, you can see I even sewed around the hearts and stuff like that. Little thread hanging off. We'll cut that off. When I cut my threads and stuff off of my papers, I like to leave my threads a little bit long, too. Um, just a FYI, using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue for all my projects today. I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece down in the center. And then I remember like, oh, wait, I didn't punch a hole where I drilled a hole in the shadow box out. So using my uh, hole punch here, punch that hole in there and get that back on. Perfect. Now it's ready to go. And you can see my box is all distressed and sanded. I did that off camera, all my wood pieces. And here's my little spool thing. You can see how I really sanded it along the side. We'll go ahead and get our paper on our square uh, wood piece here. And then we'll go ahead and glue that on. Perfect. That's ready to go. And then we'll go ahead and start gluing our pieces to our uh, wood hearts here. I chose kind of a blacks and reds. You'll see those colors quite a bit even on our next project. Once I get those glued on, I'm going to glue on my little wood piece. I wanted it to look like it was a metal washer. You know, just a cute little thing around the hole there that we punched in or drilled into the house. So I didn't create a printable for this because it's like three little words. I guess I could have done create in the moment for you, but um, I will have the font listed down below. If you don't have, you know, a vinyl cutting machine, you could just use like white Sharpie marker, white paint pen, just do all capital letters in the moment. And then I will glue the little create right next to that. So it says create in the moment. Cute. And then we're going to glue one of the little hearts right on front, kind of hanging off the edge there just to give it some fun. And now I'm going to use a light and dark crochet trim from Dollar Tree. Now, we put those two wood circles together, right? So I'm going to use two thin uh, trims here because I like to use this crochet trim a lot. But if you wanted to put one like wider ribbon there, there's enough room for a wider ribbon. So that's why I made the base so uh, wide there. So you could do a couple of skinny trims or one wide trim. And I'm just, of course, wrapping it all the way around. And then I'm going to come down with the little darker crochet trim underneath. I use this a lot, so it'll just kind of be handy right there for me. I started out, of course, as you've seen, just taping the first layer onto that wood. It'll hold just fine. Finish wrapping that around. Then I have a couple of these really short, short little stick pins here. And I'm just going to pin those right one on each one give it a little bit of decorative there and that's what that looks like just really cute and then I'm going to go ahead before we move on and take some big uh, twine here and just uh, put it through our little washer in our shadow box come down about four or five inches and tie a knot and then come down about another two or three inches and tie another knot just decorative leave it like that and then we're going to glue our little spool thing here right in the center of that square piece of wood now I'm going to use this box on our next project and so I'm going to go ahead and take these little uh, labels off because I want to use the little screws this is optional again just for decorative if you want don't have to do it at all but might as well make use of it right and then put those little labels away, those metal labels away for something else. And then I'm going to just take these screws. And I'm going to screw one in the corner, each corner of that square wood piece. Again, just to give it a little fun design element. You could totally skip this part. But it's nice and easy and it makes use of those labels. I know um, use of those labels. <laughs> it's nice and easy. Makes use of the screws from those labels. I know you're like, but now you use the screws and I can't screw the label onto something else. Well, you'll find another screw. <laughs> All right, so this is what that looks like, the little screws there. See, just a little decorative touch. All right, I'm going to bring in the other wood heart. These chunky, wonky hearts lay nicely on the edge, so I'm going to glue it on the edge. 
And now I'm going to use a small finial I had in my supply, and I just decided I wanted to add a little decorative element on top of that dowel. So I'm just painting with that uh, antique wax mixed with water. I'll sand it off camera, and we'll just glue it right on top with our Fabri-Tac glue. And then what I'm going to put here is my favorite. I found this big ball of twine. I love this combination. Um, and that's what's going to go right over that dowel. Now, if you use twine and it doesn't quite fit your dowel, just take some twine here like I'm doing here and pull it out of the center, cut it off, and then kind of tuck that back in until it's big enough to fit the diameter of your dowel. So I'm going to put this on to my dowel, and then that makes this project complete. So let's see who's joining me today for some fun DIY inspiration. Today I am joining in with Lisa, who is Dollar Mom here on YouTube, and Christina, who is Christina Elizabeth here on YouTube. We decided to come together and bring you some fun farmhouse home decor. Now this collaboration is actually called Farmhouse for the Whole House. So what the deal is, is we can make as many projects as we want, but each project must be for a separate room in your house so the one we just made obviously looks a little crafty right so it is going for my craft room i thought both of those kind of work together well right it's a crafty item and it's going to go in the craft room i know i'm such a genius <laughs> anyway make sure i will have the links down below to lisa's and christina's channel but also to their video for today make sure you go check out their videos leave a comment down below let them know i sent you and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to them they make such wonderful beautiful fantastic i love their crafting style and you're going to love them too so make sure you subscribe to their channel. With that said, let's move on to project number two. For this project, I'm gonna use this uh, wood candle holder I found at a thrift store for $2. You can use anything for the base you want. I just like the look of it. Another one of these wood dowels like we used in the last project. I think these are about 12 inches long. I'm leaving it its length. And then a wood knob here. I bought a package of these at uh, Habitat for Humanity. And then of course, one of these drawers that we already you know, took the label off in the last project. I've got some paper fit to fit the top of, or I guess that's the bottom of that drawer. And then I'm cutting some more paper to fit around the sides of the drawer here. And I'm cutting them all, you know, just about a quarter inch shorter all the way around. So I'm cutting paper to fit the top and around the four sides and then a couple of hearts. That's it. Just showing you cutting the paper. And then here's one of the hearts. I drilled a hole for another project uh, and then never used it. So I'm just going to use this. And I'm doing the same process as the last project. Going to trace around it and then come in and redraw a new pattern perimeter. I decided later to add an extra heart. So you'll see that pop in later. And then that's the pattern piece I'll cut out. I do uh, one for front and back of the heart. Now this project can either be for like kitchen or like bathroom. It'll be fun. <laughs> All right, cut my piece out here. This is what it looks like. Really cute. And then this hole, I'm going to make use of that. I had this little screw left over from something. It fits perfectly in the hole. It'll add like a little textural design element, so that'll be fun. Bringing in Debbie's Design Diary DIY a little black dress again. But before we paint, I want to mark the center of this uh, little drawer here and mark the center of my dowel. And I'm going to use a long screw here. So, of course, I'm drilling a hole in the center of my X in the box and then where I marked on the box and where I marked on the wooden dowel there. Setting that aside, we're going to do a little bit of painting first and then we will drill that dowel in. You could just wood glue it on if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and screw it in so it's nice and uh, stable there. Just painting around the edges again, of course, because, you know, we're going to cover everything up. looking good show you a little bit of painting so yes you know i did it i didn't uh 
get somebody else to do it for me. I'm marking on the inside of the box where that candle holder is going to sit. All right, and then I'll go ahead and paint that off on the inside so it looks finished. It's just so I know where I'm going to glue that candle holder so I don't have to sit and measure it later. Really doesn't matter where that candle holder is going to sit. It's not going to, you know, I'm using, I like using or thought the candle holder because I already kind of had a hole there for the candles. So it's not going to, um, it'll sit flush over that screw area because that screw is going to fit right in the center of the hole in the candlestick. Is that understandable? <laughs> so I don't have to make sure I've got the, the screw all flush with the wood or anything like that, you know, and make my holder wobbly or something like that. But if you just would glue it on, it won't matter anyway, the dowel. Okay, so I'm going ahead and painting my wood dowel. I've painted my candlestick holder. I'll paint my heart and I'll paint my knob all in black paint. I will sand and distress everything off camera. I'll show a little bit here and then I distress the rest off camera um, a little bit more even. I put a skewer inside the hole of the wood knob so I could just easier to hold while I'm painting. Perfect. And then I'm going to come in, of course, and start getting all my papers sewn here, just like I did the last project. Again, you know, if you're a sewer, you haven't tried this before, just sew like you're sewing on some fabric. Not a big deal. If you're not a sewer, skip this part. <laughs> if you want to try it, try it. Just El Cheapy sewing machine, nice and easy. It's fun. So I've got three stripes for the side and one plain piece because that's where I'm going to house a little vinyl quote later on. So that's why I've got one that's a little bit different color. And then I'm going to come in and scrape around the edges with the scissor blades. And you can see like here my threads hanging off and stuff. Yeah, I just like my threads to hang a little longer so I don't cut them really short, uh, you know, when I cut them from the sewing machine after sewing on them. I just think that gives it some fun. All right, goes ahead and start gluing things on. We'll glue the top here first and then I'll punch like a little hole and then we can go ahead and get our uh, dowel on there. I'll go ahead and use that longer screw and get our dowel screwed onto the top. So now this particular project I'm using in the kitchen as a paper towel holder, but I think it would be so cute in the bathroom as a toilet paper roll holder as well, like your extra toilet paper or something like that. I think it would be a cute way to store extra toilet paper on a cabinet. So just screwing in this dowel here right underneath. And then I'm going to use this Beacon Quick Grip. I've not used it before. All-purpose contact cement. I got it at Walmart. You all know I love my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. This stuff worked really well. It took about 15 minutes. It was like set in place and it's cement. So I'm using it. I'm going to glue my candlestick holder underneath the inside of that drawer there. And off camera, I decide that this whole uh, paper towel holder needs a little bit more stability at the bottom. So I took one of those square pieces of wood like we used in the first project at Crafter Square Wood, painted it black, and I glued that underneath at the base of that candlestick. And now you can see here, I'm just going ahead and doing a little distressing on camera. I'll do the rest off camera because I want to distress around that candle holder, that dowel, all that kind of stuff. And we'll go ahead and glue our stripe paper on around the sides of that little drawer, just the three. For now, we'll save that lighter color because that's what we're going to put our vinyl quote on. And then I go to glue the heart onto the wood heart, the heart paper onto the wood, the paper onto the wood heart. Oh my gosh, forgot to distress it. So I'm distressing it here. And then I'll go ahead and glue down that paper. I'm going to poke a little hole here. Again, this is just decorative. I just thought it'd be cute. The hole was already there from another project. Add a little glue and glue that little screw right inside because the shank on the screw is really short, so it doesn't stick out the back of the heart or anything. And use that same quick grip glue for our wood knob. We're going to glue that at the top of the dowel. Now make sure whatever knob you choose, if you want to glue a knob up here that your paper towel and or toilet paper rolls will fit over that knob. So here is the quote I decided to use. I made two and I will give you both of them. Keep it fresh, clean your mess. I think it's so cute. Um, and then this other one, because I couldn't decide between the two, bless your mess, keep it clean. I think the keep it fresh, clean your mess <laughs> would be so stinking cute with, you know, toilet paper rolls on it, but you decide what you want. There'll be free printables, of course, uh, in my description box below to my blog, there'll be PNG for your electronic cutting machine. You're going to have to clean it out or PDF if you don't have a cutting machine and then you can use carbon paper and Sharpie markers and trace it on there or paintbrush it on there or whatever you want to do. But keep it fresh, clean your mess. Could work for paper towel, could work for toilet paper. 
Who knows? <laughs> Super cute. And then if you just want to do it yourself, I'll have the fonts listed down below as well. So again, I'm using one of these thick wonky hearts from craftingwithkimber.com. I sanded a little on the base and a little on the back of the heart, right? Um, and then added the same paper there that I added on the little heart so it matched. I'm taking that uh, little black dress chalk paint, mixed it with water and a fan dress, and I'm adding little splatters, tapping the fan brush to add little splatters onto the papers and onto the wood hearts, of course, just to give it a little something more, especially on the front here. I think the splatters just give it a little something more. And then we'll go ahead and glue the little heart right next to our quote here. Cute. And then we'll glue the little heart down at the bottom. I wanted it to lay flat. So again, I sanded the bottom there and sanded where the heart's going to contact the candle. Once I get that glued on there, that makes this project complete. Let's move on to project number three, which is a dupe from antiquefarmhouse.com. I did a post in my Facebook group and asked people to post pictures of something they'd like me to dupe. This one is recommended by my subscriber, Yvette Qualley. So let's take a look at our inspiration. She wanted me to dupe this pillow from antiquefarmhouse.com. It comes in at $31.50, and I think we did a great job at saving us some money. So you're going to need some black yarn here I just got at Walmart four wood beads in their natural state and this is 100% cotton it's by Waverly brand at Walmart it's almost like a duck cloth it's really thick cream color I cut it 18 and a half by 12 and a half it gives me about a quarter inch seam allowance going all the way around the finished pillow is about 18 by 12 we're gonna make a tassel so what I've done with that black yarn is I'm gonna wrap it around my four fingers we need four of these Okay, I'm trying to make sure they all come out the same length. I've got three of them done already. I wrap it around 40 times with the yarn. It's thick enough. looks super cute. We're just going to show this whole process here. Wrap it around the 40 times. I've got two pieces of yarn at the top. They're about 12 inches long, so I cut two extra pieces of yarn for each tassel. When I get 40 times, I'm going to cut that off and take one of those 12-inch lengths, string it underneath, that yarn just wrapped around my fingers and at the top and then I'm just going to tie it really tight in a knot. Everyone does these the same day but same way but maybe a different order. And then I'm taking that other piece of twine. I'm coming down about an inch and I'm going to tie it around our loops. Double knot it here. Make it nice and tight. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut through all those loops. And then I'm going to come in and trim it. I want them all the same length. Really easy. Everyone does the same process, but different order. And then I'm going to take a skewer and I'm going to feed that yarn tail at the top. Feed the bead through. So it looks like this. Nice and easy. So we have one, two, three, and four tassels. Now for the center of our pillow, I created this Yes, I'll have a free printable for you in my description box. It'll be a PDF and a PNG. I chose a font that closely, I mean really closely resembled the writing style on the original pillow. The only thing I didn't do is they have kind of a more distressed font, and I didn't want that because it's really hard to weed out. But I did go ahead and create the same, you know, lines top and bottom. It's like thicker and a little bit thinner and a little bit thinner still. So that striping looks the exact same as well. Um, I'll have the font list down below if you want to do that yourself as well. Just kind of type it all out yourself and not use the free printable. Now the other thing I did, you can see I brought my little uh, border 
past my fabric because that way when I go to sew it in, that border will be kind of sewn into the seams just like it looks like on the original pillow. And I can cut that extra off a little bit later. Now, if you don't have an electronic cutting machine and you're going to have to do this, you know, with carbon paper and the PDF, you can use, you know, a striped fabric here, a striped ribbon, or like they have this at Hobby Lobby in different colors would look cute. So, you know, carbon paper, um, and these black fabric markers, you can get the wording on there and then just use a ribbon trim top and bottom. It would be really cute that way. So I wanted to give you that if you don't have electronic cutting machine. So here it is, my ends are, you know, hanging off. What I'm going to do is just add an extra piece strip of fabric here on both sides. I've got it laying on my ironing board so we can get this ironed on. All right, and I like to cover mine. Some people don't. They just use the carrier sheet that's over the iron-on vinyl, but I like to cover mine. And then, of course, I'm doing it at 315 degrees, 30 seconds with my Cricut heat press, and then I'll just kind of, you know, go down the line each uh, section and get that ironed on. Once that's complete, we'll go ahead and peel this off. One little part didn't stick, uh, the little swirl on the T here, so I kind of had to, I'll show you here in a minute as I go to pull it. It all pulls off really good, but just kind of missed that one little section. So, you know, we'll we'll get that on there really well. Right there. Wasn't quite on there. Pull that up. <laughs> and then we'll add the little carrier sheet kind of back over the top. And I'll just use my little Cricut mini one and iron that on. And then it's good to go. All right, so here I am. I'm just cutting off the extra. I laid that fabric there so I wouldn't iron on that vinyl onto my like ironing board, right? So that's why I laid the fabric there. And then easily I can just cut the ends off. All right, so gluer or sewer, we're going to put wrong sides together. And so if you're a gluer, you're going to glue around the edge, leaving a little opening here. Beacon Fabri-Tac glue or hot glue, you're just going to come up right at the edge, around the edge, left side, up along the top down the right side, or it might be different if you're left-handed, <laughs> down along the bottom, and you're going to just leave about, you know, five, six inch opening there, however, you know, four inches will be fine for stuffing. I'm a sewer, so I'm going to pin it together, of course, and then I like to double pin more so I know where to stop. Remember, I need to stop there and leave an opening for stuffing later, of course, and then I'm going to take it to whatever helps us remember, right? I'm going to take it to the sewing machine here, of course, and sew it. So wrong sides together, so your design is on the inside. Your backing really isn't a wrong side, but just make sure your design is laying up, and then you lay your plain piece of fabric that doesn't have a design over the top before you uh, glue it or sew it together. Got this almost all the way done here. Taking the pins out as I go. Sometimes I don't, and then I bend my pins with the needle because I thought you wanted to know that. Coming to my two-pin area here so I know where to stop. Perfect. All right, now yarn darner needles. We need to get our little things on, right? So I'm going to take one of our tassels here. I'm going to add some tape around it. You, you need a yarn darner needle for this part. You can get them at Walmart, a couple bucks. And that way I can needle or thread this through the eye of the needle and then take that little piece of tape off. And you're going to come in through your opening here. We haven't turned our pillow inside out. Okay, and then you're going to come up into a corner with that yarn darner needle there. And then I just like to come between the fabric, as you can see here, right? And then you're going to pull it all the way through. Now, a yarn darner needle only because it needs the eye needs to be bigger to get that yarn through, right? And then pull it all the way up until you feel that bead go snug into the corner of that pillow. And then I'm tying like five knots here, okay? Just because I want to make sure this doesn't come out, and then I'll just cut off the excess. Okay, we're going to do it again. I've taped the end on the yarn. Got it through the eye of the needle and then pulled the tape off. We're going to come over into the other corner right between the two pieces. And you don't have to go between the two pieces. You could kind of come out the back of the fabric a little bit. I'll show you that on the last corner. But I'm just going between the two pieces, pulling it up till I see that bead right in that corner. And then I'm going to tie five little knots. You could tie one knot. You could tie two knots. I want five knots so it's a big knot and cut off the excess. That should be like a poem or something. Do the same on this third corner here between the two pieces, pulling it up till the bead hits that corner, tying five knots, cutting off the excess. So this last corner is going to be a little bit different, okay, because we don't have a corner. We left that end open, right? So come between, like you see here, open that up, and what you can do is just come to the through the back of that 
piece of fabric that doesn't have anything on it, the back of your fabric, and then pull it through. It's going to look funny because we're not in a corner, but just pull it through the back piece of that fabric. See how it is here? It's on the back side. And then go ahead and do the same thing and tie all your knots. Now, you could do this around all of them if you want. You could just come through the back side of the fabric, but I wanted it more in the corner and snug so it looks like the original. Tying five knots and cutting off the excess. And then go ahead and turn your pillow inside out. Right side out. We're already inside out. Turn it right side out. See how those tassels are like right snug in the corner there? That's exactly what we want. This pillow turned out really cute. I kind of like it. And just be careful as you go and, you know, poke those corners out and those tassels out. And then go ahead and, you know, stuff your pillow as stuffed full as you want it. Yeah, I just like to be a little careful as I'm kind of poking those tassels out so we don't, you know, pull too hard or pull it out. We shouldn't. There's five knots in it, but there you go. Now, once we've got it stuffed, we want to close our opening. So if you're a gluer, of course, you'll glue it closed. And if you're a sewer, I'm just going to use a needle and thread here and knot it at the end. I'm going to come in right in just a little bit right last sewed with the machine kind of hide that knot and if you're gluer you're going to want to do this as well kind of see how i'm kind of taking those ends and i'm like folding them down inward toward the stuffing okay that's what you want to do if you're a gluer you might have to do it in increments you know whole you know kind of fold that in and then glue and then move on to the next section fold it in glue till you get all the way to the end that way everything looks all finished off and nice. And of course, I like to do tight little stitches when I'm sewing by hand and just almost right on top of the fabric where you can't even really see where the opening was where we stuffed it at. But I'm going to kind of finish this process all the way along. And then once we get to where the bead is, see how I'm kind of tucking that fabric inward? It might look a little gathered around the bead. That's okay. Sewing it, we're going to hide that pretty well. But So I'm just, you know... Gather that inward. I'm pinching it nice and tight. And then as I get up here, I'm going to just sew quite a few stitches in here just to make sure that, you know, everything is all intact here. And we just really close it up nicely as we can around that bead. Perfect. And then I'll kind of come around the back side just a little bit. I like come around the back side, make a little knot there, but I'm going to come around the back side and just come to that back of the fabric and make a little stitch. Do it a couple of times, and then as I get to the end, I'm going to leave a little loop here and then pull my needle through like three times and then pull it taut. That'll give me a nice knot, and I'll cut that nice and short. And then here's what it looks like, our pillow on the left, the antiquefarmhouse.com pillow on the right, coming in at $31.50. Our pillow costs $5.50. It's a savings of $26, and really... I think that makes me the winner. Yeah, loving it. And I think it's just as beautiful as the original. With that said, that makes this project complete. So I really hope you enjoyed all the projects today. Thank you again, Yvette, for, you know, giving me a little dupe inspiration to create this project. Again, I don't know. You let me know how you think it turned out. If it turned out pretty darn close and as professionally done as the original, I think we did a great job. Uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know which project was your favorite. You know, I always love to read that. And please, please, please give this video a thumbs up so it helps my channel to grow. That YouTube algorithm just picks it up and recommends my channel to other crafty people like yourselves. Also, if you wandered in here for the first time, you're just checking things out and you really dug what you saw today, make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Again, thank you. Thank you, Lisa and Christina, for collaborating with me today. Everybody, please remember their links to their channels and videos will be in the description box. You want to make sure you go over check them out, leave a comment, let them know I sent you, and make sure you hit their subscribe button. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Be thankful that you are called a child of God. Even though Jesus alone is stamped with the very genes of God himself, God loves you enough to call you his child so that you get to grow up in the sun. Although God and Jesus are closely connected with an unbreakable bond, God allows his grace to extend the same invitation to you to have this unbreakable bond of his strength and love. 
This strength will always stand between you and whatever the enemy tries to throw in your path. This love will always be your protector, your guide, and your safety net in the path of this relentless giant. But never fear, Jesus will always be by your side, standing up for you. He will always act on your behalf, and he is your one line of defense against the enemy and his skills of enabling such things as self-doubt, worry, pain, loss, or fear. Jesus will always bring you hope against the enemy. He will always be your advocate, supporting you and working things out according to his great and mighty purpose. He will always bring you comfort and speak the Father's truth in your life with understanding, justice, and mercy. He will always be in your midst and surround you with his shield of grace. He will always be your great I am. He believes with all his heart that you are worth fighting for, worth saving, and worth loving. You are his endless love that no matter what the circumstance will never fail. He will always protect. He will always trust. He will always hope. He will always persevere for you. He will never give up his unbreakable bond with you. His love will always endure through every circumstance, even to the very end of the age. Never forget that Jesus loves you enough that he chose you and called you by name. So he will always be there for you on the front lines, defending you against every principality and every darkness. Because if you consider this thought for only a moment, it will bring every fear into his light. If Jesus is for you, who can be against you? I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.